Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Easy Mini Painting with me, Christopher Ridge, and we are finishing up the Mansions of Madness Second Edition board game. We are going to do the Star Spawns here. Very big, bulky boys. Not too difficult to paint, but as long as you've got a pretty good idea for it, I think that we've got a pretty good concept here. And as long as you just take your time with it, because these are just a little bit more time consuming than some of the other miniatures, purely because of scale, just because they're they're such large figures. So they might take a little bit of time, but don't worry about it. Not too difficult. Let's just get started. First, like we did with the deep ones, is I did a base coat of shining silver. Just go ahead and do the, the brightest, shiniest, silveriest silver that you could possibly get. And then we'll just take out our no-name, generic, whatever, metallic green here. Just any sort of brand variety, anything like that, doesn't matter. You can make it super cheap. Just make sure that it is a metallic green color. And then we're just going to take out basically a, a big dry brush. Uh, just take a, a big flat, it doesn't have to be an actual dry brush, but just a big flat, you know, sort of chisel brush like this. And basically just dry brush the entirety of what you've already done. D dry brush the entirety of the miniature with this green color. It'll still look nice and silvery, but it'll just give it that sort of extra, you know, tint of green which is what we're looking for. And there you go. Now we've got a very, very silvery green monstrosity kind of thing right there. Let me get a little bit more on the wings back here. Uh, but yeah, that's the kind of thing that you want right there. You want a nice sort of bright, silvery, shiny, metallic green color. So just do that for both of them. All right, so that's just a little bit time consuming, but just take the time to do it and I promise you it'll turn out just fine. Just because these are big miniatures, these are just big models and they'll just, they'll just take a little bit of time. So just be patient, as long as you have the patience and you have the will to do it, I promise you everything that you do will turn out just fine. So you've got your nice, solid, green metallic color scheme for both of them and that's basically the sort of base coat that you want for each one. All right, so I'm gonna rinse that brush off. Then we want to bring out those tentacles a fair amount. So I'm gonna take out some orc blood because I really liked it when I used it for the riots in the last video. This, it's basically just a nice solid purple color. It's not too dark, but it's also not very bright, but just a nice general purple color. And we'll use that just to paint a, paint a solid coat over the tentacles because I think that it's a little bit more visually striking to have the tentacles be a, a very distinctly different color from the, the skin tone? I don't know if skin is the right word. I don't know what these creatures have. Chitin, whatever, I don't know. Uh, but just sort of, you know, apply it a little bit at a time and then just sort of blend it as you go upwards into the face a little bit. As long as you don't have your, your brush soaking wet It'll be pretty simple to do. All right. And there you go. You just want some nice, solid kind of just purple over each of the tentacles right there. And if you can kind of blend it into the actual face a little bit, then that's cool. And if not, not a huge deal. Basically, just go upwards to the face. I don't think that it'll break the illusion or anything like that, so, uh, though. Uh, plus, we're going to uh, do a little bit more blending with it with the next thing that we're going to do, too. Which is that we're going to take out some jungle green, which is a very nice, bright lime green color. Basically, just the brightest, limiest green that you can get. And then we'll take out a dry brush. Get yourself an actual dry brush if you can. If not, no worries. Another one of those sort of, like, flat chisel, you know, brushes will work just fine. And we're going to use this to dry brush the face and the arms, I think. And that will just add a little bit more of a sort of highlight to the face compared to the rest of the skin tone. We just want to brighten up that face just to kind of draw the eye in just a little bit more. Another thing you can do too, if you want, if you want to make it even brighter, you can take out just a little bit of demonic yellow or maybe moon dust or just some other sort of, you know, yellowish color. 
and you can add just a little bit of a touch of that. You can just kind of, you know, blend a blend a little bit into your brush, a little bit when you're when you're kind of getting some some paint on your brush like that, and that will just brighten it up even more. But that's optional. If you if you don't want to mess with color blending, if you're not very confident uh, in your ability to do that just yet, you don't have to. Uh, but it's a good opportunity to get some practice in with uh, blending colors just a little bit. But that'll just brighten it up even more, and that'll really, really draw the eye in. When you're dry brushing too, you can kind of just sort of softly blend down the tentacles just a little bit more. If you get a little bit of this sort of bright lime green, yellowy green sort of overlapping the tentacles just a little bit, not a big deal. And then like I said, I feel like if you just kind of do it with the shoulders a little bit too, and the arms, that will just kind of draw the, uh, the eye in just a little bit more with those particular regions, which I think is going to be a little bit important for, for such a large miniature. Right, so there you go, that just kind of gets the arms and the head there just a little bit. And then what we'll do too for the last part is we'll just do the backs of the wings, and that way there's something to kind of look at when you're looking at it from, well, rather than the backs of, mm, do, 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 what do I want to do? Instead of the backs of the wings actually, why don't we just do the sort of like rib cage on his back here. There you go, and that'll just kind of uh, get a little bit, yeah, a little bit more sort of attention, and then we'll just do the sort of um, heels? Yeah, like his sort of Achilles heels here, because they stand out just a little bit too. There you go, and that just sort of, like I said, you know, adds a little bit of just sort of complexity and just a little bit of color variation between the rest of the metallic, you know, uh, shiny green color that we have there. So I'll just go ahead and do that for both of them. All right, and then to be perfectly honest, in practice, while I was doing all of that, it turned out to be a lot more useful to just use mostly yellow than it was to use that jungle green color. So you can do either way. I mean, you can just sort of blend the two colors until you kind of get sort of an amalgamation of, of what you want. Uh, but don't be don't be afraid to experiment more with the yellow than I might have initially led on. But there you go. That's the kind of thing that we want right there. And then to, you just get a little bit of the backside there too, and that just shows that you got. A little bit of a sort of, you know, um, color variation, even though you're using the, you know, primarily the same color, just, you know, different shades of green. All right, so we're done with that. We're going to rinse off my dry brush. Then we'll take out some Warlock Purple, because I think that the Orc Blood color that we used on the tentacles is probably nice and dry now. And what we'll do is we'll dry brush this Warlock Purple color over the tentacles just to add a little bit of uh, highlight and uh, brighter color variation to the tentacles. And we'll use a dry brush and we'll do the same sort of thing. So we'll just dry brush the tentacles with Warlock Purple. When you are dry brushing with these tentacles, make sure to go along each tentacle actually because each one has that sort of veiny fold that kind of goes horizontally across, you know, each one. And that's the thing that, you know, those are the things that you're really wanting to highlight here. So don't go left to right with your brush strokes, go up and down, because that is how you will really, really highlight those, you know, veiny folds in the tentacles. When you get to the base of them here, when you're just kind of wrapping around the side of each one, then it's okay to go from, from side to side like that. But just make sure that when you're doing the, you know, the tops or the fronts or whatever, that you're going up and down. Doing the, the sort of back or underside of it, like what I'm doing right here right now, a little bit less important, I would say, just because it's not as visually apparent from a tabletop perspective. But if you want to get it for the sake of completionism, just make sure you get, you know, underneath from the underside here. But yeah, there you go. You want that nice sort of bright, really, really sickly, you know, pink color. And that's what we want for the tentacles. You know, just sort of a basis of comparison. This is with the Warlock Purple, or this is with, the, yeah, Warlock Purple. This is no Warlock Purple. So yeah, you can see the, the big difference there. All 
All right, and then while you've got this purple color here too, you can just sort of lightly dry brush upwards to the face and that'll that'll give a little bit of a, a, bend, a better sort of sense of blending that you want right there. All right, but yeah, that's the kind of thing that you're looking for right there, so that looks great. All right, so we're done with that, and honestly, we're done with most of the major stuff that we want to do, so I think next up we'll go ahead and just move on to our uh, quick shade, and we'll use dark tone for that. We want to get that same sort of, you know, inky black from the depths sort of look that the deep ones had. And you are going to need a fair amount of it, just as a heads up, obviously just because these are large miniatures and there's a lot of surface area. So go ahead and just do an even coat of dark tone. You can use just any old brush. Let me see here. Yeah, just any old fat no-name brush, just like this. You can water it down just a little tiny bit. Uh, but then just get some, some universal coverage across uh, the whole miniature. And then let that dry completely, and then we'll move on to the next step. And as soon as that quick shade is dry, I'm going to take out a little bit of pure red, just a little bit here, because I'm just going to go ahead and dot the eyes really quickly, nothing special. Luckily, these eyes are very, very large on this miniature, so not not really a huge, crazy detail. I definitely, the, you know, normally on, on some of the smaller miniatures, I would say that eyes are purely optional, but I would say that because these ones are so much larger and more prominent, I would say go ahead and just knock them out. I think it'll really, really uh, kind of bring it all together. Yeah, really, really nice eyes there. There you go. He is ready to drive you completely insane. Literally. Ha, ha, ha. And there you go. That will pretty much be it. The last thing that I'm going to do is I want those eyes to be completely dry, so we'll wait some more time for things to dry. And then I'm going to apply a gloss varnish to the whole thing because, like the deep ones. I want them to have that wet, slimy look. Uh, I would say that the varnish is optional, if you, especially if you use the, uh, you know, the metallic, you know, paint here for everything, uh, you know, on the miniature as, like, the base coat and everything like that. You know, it's it's maybe optional, but if you really, really, really want to bring it together, use that gloss varnish. So I'm going to apply that gloss varnish, and then you're done. And there you go, everybody. Those are the star spawns from Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. And that will wrap up our entire series here of the Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition miniatures. Not sure what I'll move on to next. I did just get a new board game that I'm looking forward to playing. It's the Gargoyles board game. There are a few miniatures in it. Uh, they're not super fancy, but maybe, I don't know, I might might play play around with them, see if uh, see if they might be fun to paint, but I don't really know. I um, don't know if I'll do more mansion stuff, because I've already got all of the expansions for this game, but I've already got about half of the miniatures painted for those. I've done those through other outlooks and, and other avenues, so I don't I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll uh, knock out some more of those for this channel, but uh, we'll just kind of see how it goes. But in any case, thank you everybody for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and throw it a like, and if you want to see more content in general, you can subscribe to the channel. Like I said, I don't really know what I'm going to do right now, but I'll figure out something. I won't take up any more of your time, though. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.